let's move on to design composition now, which is the structure by which all the design elements interact. Uh, we'll talk about dominance, contrast, and relationships, unity and variety, hierarchy, and we'll f finish with grids. So dominance, contrast, and relationships. The first principle you should probably understand that you'll use all the time is that your eye goes to the areas of highest contrast first. So what do I mean here? So if you have a grid of gray dots and a black square, your eye will go straight to the black square or the white square. If you, a lot of people think your eye goes to red first. Well, if you have a field of red roses and one white rose, your eye will go to the white rose first. So it's not just red or certain intrinsic colors. It's all about relationships. Um, so here are some examples of web design that uses this sort of overall monochromatic grayscale. And then whenever you introduce color, it creates a difference. This could be green, yellow, blue, whatever. Whatever there's diff, wherever there's difference, that's where your eye is going to go to first. Tension is like the Michelangelo God uh, painting in Sistine Chapel, right? When two objects get closer and closer together, it creates this visual tension. Uh, sometimes tension is good and sometimes tension is bad. Tension typically makes your eye go to that area. So if you want to draw the viewer's attention to that area, make those objects come closer together. If not, you want to avoid tension. tension. Here are some great examples of how uh, tension can be used to create these focal points and to move your eye throughout the composition. Hierarchy is really important when it comes to graphic design. You can't make everything important, although your client may want you to. You simply can't make the, everything as important as everything else. So you'll need to organize and plan for what are the most important parts of the design. What do you want the viewer to see first? second and third. So here are a couple of examples. Typically, again, um, you could argue that either this logo or this grid of images is the first or sec first and second things you see. And then this small bit of navigation here is the third thing you see. So they've got a clear set of hierarchy, one, two, and three. On this design, you can see as well, the first thing you probably notice is the camera machine thing here. Uh, some I don't know, I'm not actually sure what it is. And then the second thing is this, this type over on the left-hand side, and then the navigation is the third thing. So again, creating this very distinctive hierarchy. You can't make the navigation the same size as this text. It won't work. And you can't make this text the size of the image. So you need to create this clear hierarchy. Many people think size is the only way to create hierarchy. They're wrong. Here are some other ways. Color, shape. Use someone's face, tension, value contrast. These should start to sound familiar because we've already gone over them. So you can use those other design elements and design principles to create hierarchy. Unity and variety. Think of unity as consistency and variety as the spice of life, right? Unity is made through repetition and variety is made through difference. So you want to avoid extreme unity or boring things, and you also want to avoid chaos or extreme variety. Um, so together, a nice mix between the two is what we call rhythm. So uh, you start by repeating things, repeating colors, repeating the grid system or the proportions, repeating all these different elements. And then whenever you add a different element, that creates a variety or creates a focal point. So you want somewhere between the two. Everything, everywhere, basically means you have nothing nowhere, which doesn't make sense, but you know what I mean, right? You can't have a jam-packed uh, design with no negative space or, and everything, all the colors in the rainbow, and expect us to pay attention to it or for it to look good or for it to even be functional. So number one, limit your variables. Err on the side of a minimal simplified design. Um, also, if you're going to, if you want a, a lot of different kinds of shapes, then limit the color. Or if you want a lot of color, simplify your grid system. So um, 
limit your variables, right? If you're going to change one variable, limit the other ones. All right, the grid is the structure that you'll be using to design your sites, to build your sites. It's the underlying foundation in building layouts, especially on web design. So grids are everywhere, just look around. Grids can be lifeless, but only if you let them be. So here are some different examples of the grid. A book grid, which is a simple one column. Newspapers usually have like a seven column grid. Magazines tend to have a two to three column grid. And websites tend to have this reverse L. Now yours doesn't have to be like this, but I wanted to show you typically how websites work. This reverse L formation with navigation on the top, maybe navigation on the left, logo in the upper left hand corner, and a, maybe a two or three column grid with the content here. So really we're dealing with website grids and um, a grid is going to help you make your website structure consistent, understandable, uh, repeatable, and easy to use by the user. Here are some great examples of a two-column grid within web design, uh, a pattern grid, or a modular grid where the, the little capsules change size themselves. Here are some more grids, uh, a grid that functions or moves sort of horizontally with these vertical strips. A vertical grid kind of moves vertically because it has a lot of horizontal strips. And then a hierarchical grid is a grid that has a clear delineation in these modules. So the typography in this first section, then this second section, and then this third section. Here are some additional grids, one we've already seen. But your grids can also be quite simple. So don't think you need a really complex grid system. It could be a simple three column grid where all the spaces are the same, keeping your design nice and simple. So let's finish by reminding ourselves of things when you start designing your site and start your sketches, which is one, start with a simple grid. Err on the side of unity rather than too much variety. And number two, limit your variables. If you're gonna change one variable, then limit the other ones. And number three, make sure your hierarchy is clear. Set up three zones. What do you want them to see first? What do you want them to see second? And what do you want them to see third? Any more than three or four zones is going to be too complex and too confusing for your viewer. That's the basics of web design. Uh, we'll continue to talk about this in the discussions and in other posts that I make. Thanks so much.